how to act. There's no answer for that, just act. The more you get into action, the less the mind is in the future, meaning the less you are caught up in the result, risking whatever happens. Anyway, since I don't have the right to the fruit, how will it matter? Let me just go for it. The more you go 100% into that action, the greater the result, which is in alignment towards something bigger, comes to you. Satyam Param Dimahi Satyam Param Dimahi Satyam Param Dimahi Everybody good? You remember where we left off? <laughs> One of those sutras. You remember what was last being discussed? What was Bhagwan Krishna saying to Arjun? 41 through 44 was what? He was basically answering some of the questions that Krishna had raised in chapter one, right? More or less. He was asking Krishna, remember Arjun in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, he said to Lord Krishna, take me to the middle between the two battlefields, uh, the, the soldiers, take me in the middle. Let me see who dare fight with me. Do you remember that initial sentence when Arjuna said to Lord Krishna to move the chariot, it was from this place of who would come in front of me, who would dare to fight me. It was a very self-individuated, sort of vengeful, um, personal gain stat, right? That's where he was coming from, that state of mind. And now in between 41 and 42, 44, Lord Krishna is moving Arjun from personal gain to something higher. Think about the other people, the citizens and so on. Right? That's kind of where we were. And this is true for all of us. This is the more we look with a wider lens in our life, the easier it is for us to navigate what's in front of us. That's when we invite the higher, greater power or vibration behind what we have to do. Yes, more or less. I'm simplifying the conversation for now. It's good to go back and rehear some of these things, but that's where we left off. All right. So Mala, let's begin with... Um, 45, please. Traigun Yavishaya Arjuna, the Vedas thus deal with the evolutes of the three gunas, modes of prakriti, namely worldly enjoyments and the means of attaining such enjoyments be thou indifferent to these enjoyments and their means rising above pairs of opposites like pleasure and pain etc established in the eternal existence god absolutely unconcerned 
about the fulfillment of bonds and the preservation of what has been already attained and self-controlled. I'm not even sure if that was English, so let's let me read that again, okay? That didn't even sound like English to me. <clears throat> Arjuna, the Vedas thus deal with the evolutes of the three gunas. First of all, what are the three gunas? This we know back and forth already, right? Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. It's part of existence of life. These three gunas are governing our life, our existence, our choices, our actions, our mind, and how we move into things. So Lord Krishna is saying, they deal with these three gunas and how this prakriti, how this evolves. Worldly enjoyments and the means of attaining such enjoyments. Depending on what guna from which you operate, you get caught in the attachments and the results of those gunas. Rajsik, run, 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 I want more, 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 more. It never comes to an end, you want that much more. This, this we are clear on, correct? The three gunas and the results, yes? Or do we need to talk about this more? We're good with this. Lots has been discussed by Gurudev, no? Let me come back. Um, be indifferent to these enjoyments and their means. Rise above the pairs of opposites like pleasure and pain, established in the eternal existence, you can say consciousness, here it is written God, absolutely unconcerned about the fulfillment of wants and the preservation of what has been already attained and self-control. Remember I mentioned two things continuously go on. We want to hold on to what we have gained and we want to get what we don't have. This is our basic aim, focus and direction in life. Holding on, this is Tamavgun and getting more of what we don't have is Rajavgun. And he's saying rise above this. So he's now talking about or he's about to enter into what we know. Do your action, leave aside the fruits of your actions. But let's let's take it one step at a time. But that's where Krishna Bhagwan is headed. Yeah. Go ahead. Yava Nartha Udapani Sarvata Sampluto Daki Tavan Sarveshu Vedeshu Brahmanasya Vijanataha A Brahmana who has obtained enlightenment has as much use for all the Vedas as one who stands at the brink of a sheet of water overflowing on all sides has for a small reservoir of water. Karman yevadhikarasti ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phalahe turbhuhu ma te sangustva karmani your right is to work only and never to the fruit thereof. Do not be the cause of the fruit of action, nor let your attachments be to inaction. So this is, this is where we have to really dig in. First of all, it's very interesting, you know, the age old question, what comes to me as, I, as Mala was reading and as I was reading along with her, is there's always this question of free will and destiny, right? You'll see in, in Gurudev's question basket continuously, do we have a choice in this? Is this destined? Gurudev, tell us please, how much free will do we have? And if you read this, your right is to work only. What does that implicate? Free will. Are you, yes or no? Are you here reading what I'm reading? Your right, if I have a right, is to work only. That at least for learning purposes, at least at this stage, Lord Krishna is saying you have free will. Free will to do what? Your action, your choice to work. To work, not your choice to the results. 
Listen, okay, I don't know if you had a ojo as Mala was reading, but I did, so stay alert and stay awake. You have the right, the free will to act, to give you 100%, to move towards the direction, whatever gunas are operating, let's leave that aside for now, but not to the results. That's really what's being said. So you see when Guruji says it's a combination of free will and destiny, now it makes a little bit more sense. You keep acting, <clears throat> the results will be what the results will be. Why do we not have a choice? Why do we not have free will in the results? Because more than one thing depends on the results. I want to build a business. Let's, let's not use the example of weight and height because I get really crazy with that example. You know, you have, see, free will to your weight and your height is destiny. Could we please get a little different example that maybe, you know, registers even weight. If you have a thyroid problem, you could argue, well, thyroid is a health problem that I can't do anything about. <clears throat> even the doctors can't. So. <clears throat> excuse me, I keep gaining weight. So you want to build a business. You have the right to go for it, to do whatever it is that you're going to do, borrow money, um, you know, find a location, decide what product you're going to sell or buy, whatever business you're going to do. And it's not working and do it again and figure things out and keep going. The results are not just dependent on you. We often say the economy, your partner, how much of that product is being sold by other people. There are so many other factors, variables that impact the result of the actions that you're taking. So if we do not have the right in the sense, we cannot determine what results we will get based on our action, but listen to this. The closer you are to giving you 100%, 100% when you go for it without thinking about, will this work? Will it not work? Will I get what I planned for? The more you simply stay in action, the more the universe gets behind you towards the results that you want. Then you have some say, a little bit, I often use the example of a doorknob, a little bit you can turn left or right, to the fruits. Is this clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is really, it's a huge thing. Now, if you think about it, <clears throat> what Gurudev talks about in terms of free will, destiny, giving you 100%. Now, if you put it all together, you can see how it registers for us. Now, we often, and, and present moment conversation that Guruji has, live in the present moment. When we do anything, where's our mind? It's not in the present moment. We're worried about what might or might not happen. It's in the future, correct? The example of a business. If it doesn't work out, what am I gonna do? I'll have borrowed all this money. If I don't get into the school I want, what's gonna happen? My parents have spent so much money. Mind is in the future. You are actually caught up in the result and you are not focused on the action to get to the result. Where is your attention divided? When you're in action, where are we? Present moment, future or past? Present moment. The more you're focused in just doing, doing is acting. Researching people is not doing. Okay, many times when you talk to people one on one and you ask them the difference between thinking and doing. Let me tell you something, most people come up with more thinking, it just looks like doing. I'm talking to my friends about it, is that doing or thinking? It's thinking just out loud with another person who's thinking as much as you are thinking, if not more. Yes. If you say, so what are you gonna do about it? When are you gonna move into that? Well, I'm, I'm reading and researching everything and I had this thought. What is it, doing or thinking? Th 
thinking. Action is the word that is used, karma. The more you get into action, the less the mind is in the future, meaning the less you are caught up in the result. Krishna Bhagwan is saying you have the right to act. You do not have the right, meaning you have no say over the fruits. But the moment you get caught in the fruit, what are you doing? You are not in karma yoga anymore. It's a karma. You have now stepped away from karma yoga and into karta. The more we focus on the results, the more karta increases. Doership comes because we get caught in the results. The mind is in the future in whatever it is we want to achieve. That's where we start to say, I will do. I did not do. And the more we focus there, the more doership increases, the less we are in karma yoga, selfless service. And it's very tricky. I had this thought I was on a flight um, when I was going. So this, this person was pushing their trolley, you know, cart with the luggage and whatever as I was coming out and a couple of things fell over. So someone picked up uh, another passenger, picked up the things and gave it to the lady. And she was in her own bubble with whatever was going on. She just continued to, she took the things, put it in the cart and she kept moving forward. And the person said, God, the least you could say is thank you. And suddenly my mind went, oops, a good deed gone bad. Not, not exactly, but you understand the point I'm making. There was no thought in doing that action. I should pick it up, let me help her. It'll be good for me to help her. Oh, I'll get some good merits for helping. Oh, I stretch my hand first. Oh, I did my random act of kindness, you know, all that crazy homework that we have to do. Nothing. It was a spontaneous action. Things fell, picked it up and gave it. Till that moment, there was no awareness of the result. The mind was not in the future. It just was in the moment, picked up the stuffed items that fell, passed it and continued to walk. And the lady continued to push her cart and immediately came out of the man's mouth. Just Split second, my God, the least you can say is thank you. Where's the mind there? I'm giving the most trite example, but this is how quickly the mind gets caught in the result, in the future, in the wanting of something behind whatever it is that we do. Are you with me? Do you see? For a moment it's 100% and then it's no longer. And so this is the thing that Krishna Bhagwan is talking about. Now look, you know, kicking her items that fell on the floor versus picking them up and giving it to her and looking for gratitude is one is clearly better than the other. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm not saying don't help. That's not the point. It's move like Arjuna from me, my revenge, my kingdom, my brothers to what is good for society, the citizens as a prince, to dedicating that action eventually to a higher, greater power. Oh, the, which we are not there, but the divine is in front of me, is what Gurudev would, would say, offering all action, all results to the divine. So let's also look a little further. If you look, Krishna Bhagavan started with the highest of knowledge, correct? Highest of knowledge was given. And now he's going into Karma Yoga. So why this? When you cannot embrace the highest of knowledge, remember Gurudev in his video also mentioned so many talk about it, but very few can live it. People discuss it, they talk about it, they might even get elated in discussing it, but to live it is a rare, rare person. So in order, if you cannot in hearing, in discussing, in manana, in shavana, in nididhyasa, live the knowledge, then what is Krishna Bhagavan saying? In your actions, move towards karma yoga. It purifies the mind. It prepares the nervous system, buddhi. Remember, that was the conversation. Buddhi and mind, chitta, gets purified, 
prepares the intellect to receive the knowledge so that when we do hear it, it goes deeper than the idea. I gave the example two weeks back, you know, we all know idea is very clear. Being angry is not good. Yes, from the age of two or three, we know don't be angry. That's not good. Have we really integrated what anger is and how it's not good? No. We don't truly understand. We don't truly comprehend. That's why we do it again and again. If we really comprehend it, it would not happen again and again. And then from there becomes living the experience where you no longer live the anger. It might come and go like a line in water, as Gurudev says, as it's said in the Bhagavad Gita, but your state, overarching state of mind is calm and peaceful. Are we, are we clear? Are you clear what I'm saying to you? Yes? This is really, to me, this is fascinating. I didn't quite expect that that's where this would go, you know? So, for right now, we have the right to action. Thinking is not action. Researching is not action. Talking about it endlessly is not action. Risking whatever happens anyway, since I don't have the right to the fruit, how will it matter? Let me just go for it. We're always trying to control the fruit of the action. Based on the control of the fruit of the action, we make choices. We don't just act. We have it the other way around. We actually discussed that in the very first session. We make decisions first and then give it reasons in the back. In hindsight. Are you with me? Okay, so let's go to that same sutra again. Perform your duties. Oops, sorry. Your right is to work only and never to the fruit. Never to the fruit. Do not be the cause of the fruit of action. Don't choose based on if this, then, if that, not, what if it doesn't, because that's fear, that's self-survival. That's going to take us deeper and deeper down into the small eye and into karta, doership. You, you look a little, are you with me? <laughs> are you with me? Do not be the cause of the fruit of action, nor let your attachment be to inaction. So, I'm not going to act, I'll just sit and be calm, do nothing, is the same. That's also avoiding the fruit. We don't want something, so we decide not to do it. We're afraid of the consequence, so we decide not to take any choice and act upon the choice. Yeah? Okay, let's stop here for a second. Any thoughts, questions, comments, anything? This thought comes that to act is inevitable. I mean, we have to act, right? Right. So you cannot avoid acting. That's right. Except we spend a lot of time, effort, and energy avoiding action because we're afraid of the consequence, the results. Haven't you seen that? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. It's inevitable. You cannot avoid action. But what he said, you know, it's analysis paralysis. You think, you think, you think, you plan, you organize, you're paralyzed. You never take any action. No? Uh, Vishal, go ahead. Yeah, um, Rashididi, uh, what about uh, action addiction, karma bandana, uh, which is people who are uh, really um, addicted to action? Um, again, they may not have bondage to the result, but the, the gratification uh, uh, experience through acting, act, you know, like people in certain roles and, in, in, for example, they love doing what they're doing. They're not really bonded to the action, but then the action itself becomes a bondage. Um, is that doership as well? I mean, look, 
at this stage, what is being dictated is you have the right to act, not to the fruit. If you're frivolously acting around, that's where the conversation of the three gunas come in. Different type of action lead to different types of fruit. What you're describing sounds like rajasik, just for the sake of doing, 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 people are doing, right? So that's the kind of result that you're going to get. That's what it's saying. You just keep going. People are endlessly doing something, getting nowhere. That also we know. And that has its own consequence, correct? So you will get the results that you will get based on the type of gunas through which you are choosing your action. And what you describe is somebody who's just endlessly keeping busy. That's it. And that's the result that they get in life. You see that shows up in relationship, it shows up at home, it shows up in their peace of mind, and it shows up in the results of their actions also. You know, Gurje used the example, if you remember, somebody who buys hundreds of books and reads books but does no action. Remember that in, yeah. in the talk that Gurudev gave? Yeah. He, if you look at his face, he doesn't know a thing about anything he's read because he just reads and takes no action. And in your case, you're describing the opposite, where somebody just keeps going, 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 and gets nowhere. Rad sick action. That's it. Yeah, but but you, then you see in real world, as entrepreneurs and businessmen, they they may not necessarily be knowledge, but they've just struggled so much and hustled so much through other lives. So it's full of action, really, uh, worldly action, and and they've achieved quote unquote success in the eyes of the world. Uh, how do you compare so I, do you again, think? we don't know who achieved the success. You see, you're confusing the two things. The statement is you have the right to act. What results come is not up to you. So go on, keep going, doing, give you 100%. Entrepreneurs are one of those forces, depending on who it is, of course, who give all their best to it, right? I mean, then, then you get into losing half your health, and so on and so forth. That's another conversation altogether. But we're just talking about a simple, and which is not so simple, is you have the right to act, not to the fruit. But most of us act driven by our attention on the fruit. What if it doesn't, or what if it does? So I should do this, I should not do this. Oh my God, then what? Give you 100% is what we're saying. Whatever happens will happen. If it doesn't go the way you want, jump into it again. This is how Gurudev encourages us. Right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Florence. Did you say, don't be the cause of the fruit of action? Is that what you said? No, the sentence is this. Do not be the cause of the fruit of action. Yes. Can you elaborate on that? Maybe it's in English. But I... So you are not the cause. Do not think that you created the results of your actions. That's okay. what it's okay. saying. Yeah. Okay. We, that creates karta. That creates doership. Just, just the example that uh, Vishal gave earlier. People do X, Y, and Z, and then they believe they achieved A, B, and C. Because of what I did or because of what I did not do, I got what I got. And Krishna Bhagwan is pointing out, do not have ownership of you doing for the results that come. Is that clear, everybody? Yes, wave and let me know. It's very important that we understand it from that perspective. Don't own the fruits by thinking you did it. All you did is act. And the result came. The clearest example, if you remember from Yoga Vashishta, was crow elided, landed on a coconut tree, coconut fell. We have this idea that because the crow flew and the crow landed on the coconut tree, that's what made the coconut fall. If the crow thinks, I made the coconut fall, what has happened? The crow now is thinking that it has some say over the fruit of its flying and landing. 
And Bhagwan is saying, it's not so. You can fly, you can land on the coconut tree. Whether or not the coconut falls is not up to you. There are many other variables that make the coconut fall. Maybe there was wind. Maybe there was a squirrel on the other side. Maybe the coconut was ripe exactly in the moment that the crow landed, that the coconut fell. You do not know. Many different things depend on it. The results, actually, if you just leave aside knowledge, forget about Krishna and, and Vedanta and Karma Yoga and all those things. Just think like a regular lay human being in your work, in driving from point A to point B. You know, we were just coming back from an exercise class. Okay, we're going to go from the rowing class back here so that I can be here in time to do the Bhagavad Gita session. It's really simple. We're going to drive from A to B. There's construction, there's traffic. So we then go left and we think that will be a better street. Then we go right. Maybe that'll be less congested and we keep going whichever way we keep going. Who's in charge? Is it the person who was driving, did we get here at the time that we got here because we did something? We had the right to drive. Are you with me? The control that we had was to keep going with all the circumstances that were coming in front of us. The roadblocks, the traffic, the red light, whatever came in front of us, we had the right to navigate through it but not the result, meaning what time do I reach at the end was not really in our hands. But we think it is. Do we not? It's a very simple example, but we think we controlled it. And it's the, the, the verse is saying, do not think that you had anything to do with the results. All you did was act. We actually know in our life, sometimes we do almost nothing and we get amazing results. And sometimes we do so much. We give so much time and energy and effort and resource and rethink and redo and redo and redo. And you just don't get the results that you're, quote, expecting. So it's saying, don't expect, just do. But the more you just do, this is the important piece, wake up. The more you just do, the greater the chances are of the result coming to you that's good for you, that you're in, that's almost intended. This you can see as sankalp. Sankalp comes almost in a sense automatic and after the fact. The more you give your 100%, the more you invite the result that you want. But we have this notion of sankalp of sitting, I'm going to do 11 Guru Pujas a day, and then we want 5,000 people, and our action is, I postered twice. Okay. No, poster 5,000 times and see what happens. Keep going. Are you with me? You know, we, we have it backwards. We, we, the sankalpa, this notion of intention is not in your thinking. And then now we're all going to gather and do Om Namah Shivaya. We're going to do Guru Puja. Yes, that generates a certain vibration. A vibration to do what? To have clear movement and action. Clarity of thought that can translate into action. That could come. But it's not about because I pray. That's actually tamsik, sitting around praying. God is not going to pop people down from the sky to fill your room. You know, he's not delivering babies like that. Though he delivers babies, it's not like that, not plopping down from the sky. So, oh, my, my room is full now with 500 people. You didn't even crack a smile. That means you're not really listening. <laughs> I mean, to have a visual of God sitting in the sky delivering babies to fill your course, not going to happen. I'm saying that we have it in a certain way backwards. Just go for it. If that's not it, okay, that. If that's not it, let's do that. Keep moving. And the more you align 
away from focusing on the results, which is how many people do we have now? Dude, this morning we had 50 people. It's just an hour later. I don't think we reached 5,000 yet. No, anything that can happen. Don't take a week up. Don't be negative. What? No, no. That's not being negative. That's you being ignorant. That's not being optimistic. That's being feverish. Can you see the distinction? There's this, this idea of and now how many how many people don't don't look at the numbers don't worry about the numbers don't worry about the results just stay clear in your action and actually the more more you act the more clear your thinking is listen to what i just said the more you're in action the more intuitive, more clear, more sattvic is our thinking. That's how we can navigate. Oh, I know what I have to do. If you look at Gurudev, you know, we say, Gurudev, we had planned this, we did as you said, but then this, huh, then, ye karlo. then go do this. Immediately he gives another alternative idea, does he not? Immediately. Why? Because he's not focused on, oh, that didn't happen. Now what are we going to do? That's terrible. I, and we invested all that money and it didn't go that way. Nothing. Keep moving forward. Pedal the bike. Act, act, act. See? Okay, Mira. <clears throat> Uh, all my life, of course, I've only been driven by the consequences of my actions. So how do we unlearn that? Well, we're talking about it, right? We, you have to, you know, it's not about unlearning in one moment. It's self-examining. Like for me, one of the things I can say is so many things have happened in life. Maybe in the moment I thought it's happening because the crow landed on the coconut tree and it made the coconut fall, connecting cause and effect to me, my choices or my actions. But having looked back, looking in hindsight, I see, how did I become a lawyer? I actually didn't have much to, I, somehow I was led there. Oh, how did I meet Gurudev? Okay, how did I let go of becoming a lawyer and go full time? It's you cannot really say because of A, I did B and therefore C. If you look at your day, learn to break down your day. What happened? I woke up in the morning. I knew I had to go for a follow up medical appointment. OK, but then somehow that turned into, OK, let's go rowing. It was not because I did something somehow just, yeah, we have time. Let's we had lunch. Should we have lunch there? We had lunch. OK. Don't you notice that it kind of flows from one thing to another thing and we equate A to B as cause and effect versus just a flow from A to B? Yes or no? Do you not notice that in life? And the more you recognize that in your own life, the more you'll find you say, oh, I'm a log in a river that's floating. And sometimes it appears like the river is carrying me. But so many times I fool myself as a log thinking into believing that I am rolling myself downstream towards the ocean. But really, it's not the case. So that's where Nididhyasa and Manana comes in. You have to self-reflect, look really back. And as I say, don't, don't worry about big actions. Even day-to-day -day action. For me, I could just reflect in the day as, as we were just coming. I kept looking at the on the Tesla, you know, what time would I arrive? And it was showing 539, 542, 544. Um, and I had to set up the computer and so on. And I was like, somehow you get led there and everything will be fine. And I moved from one place to another. I reset up. OK, I let go of oh, I left my jacket on. I'm here. Do you, you understand? It's happening. I didn't plan it strategize it fix it and then i'll do this and then i'll do that and therefore oh i now started on time it happened but i kept acting in the meanwhile philip to go left philip go right he was doing whatever he was doing oh boy philip and then 
sat over there no that doesn't look good somehow my computer and okay what about here because wherever i sit i have no space in front of me to put my knees okay and boom here we are you keep acting keep moving keep going and results come and the more you just move i'm going to be late i'm going to be late i'm going to be late. i promise you i would have been late because I was owning the fruit of the action. I don't know, am I belaboring the point? I think this is very important. It shows up in the tiniest of ways, you know. And I'm reminding myself, of course, as much as we are reminding each other in a certain way. Um, Rekha, go. So, Didi, I know your right is to work only, but sometimes you get fear of acting. Like, so how do you come out of the fear? Like, I know that I left my job, for instance, four years back, COVID time, and now I do want to go back to the job market, but I just, whole day just passes. It's not I'm wasting my time, but doing something or other, but I don't know. You're not taking any action towards it. Yeah, I get that. But how do I take? How how do you take? How do I take? I have a plate of food in front of me. How do I bring the grilled cheese on my plate to my mouth? I'm afraid that the cheese is going to grow on my bum. You know, uh, I'm putting on weight. I'm afraid of eating the cheese. I don't know, but um, how do I do it? I mean there's yes. no way out of action but action if you're not acting there's no how how is an indication you are afraid how do i get up from this chair well, i have to get know. up from the chair right how do i apply for a job i'm afraid so be afraid apply for a job you know it's a mechanical process do you understand what I'm saying? How do I lift the phone off the table? I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Well, you're going to have to be afraid and do it anyway. Pick up the phone. What you are saying is I want to resolve the fear first. What you are saying is I want to control the fruit of what I will do first. And that is exactly what this verse is addressing. Take action regardless he's saying arjun arjun is saying i don't want to shoot my uncle and my guru and this is terrible and how and bhagwan is saying do it anyway isn't that what's going on right now isn't that what you're hearing well do it anyway yeah i get it you don't want to but you know you're a prince you you have to protect your kingdom you have to protect your citizens you've been trained in, in what you do in warfare. So pick up the bow and arrow and let's go for it, dude. That's what he's saying. And the same thing for you. You know how to work. You've been trained in whatever you have to do. I assume you need the money to run the family. You need a job. So get up, pick up the bow and arrow, pen and pencil, type up your resume and send it out. There's no difference here between what you are saying and what is happening to Krishna and what Bhagwan is saying to Krishna. It just sounds different. Actually, what Arjun's situation is, is extreme. You know, I'm afraid to apply for a job and I'm Lord Krishna, I'm afraid to kill my own family members. Oh, it's a little bit more in <laughs> intense. But so like, do, you, do you plan like this time? Okay, you have to- You're thinking. You're thinking, your question is thinking, you're not hearing my answer because you're obsessed about trying to get it perfect. That is called thinking. You're thinking, do you nothing, just apply for a job. That's it. There's no how beyond that. Just go do that. That's it. Pick up the bow and the arrow, put it in and shoot. If, uh, but look what's happening. Arjun, like you, is going to wait out another 600 verses. I think we did some, maybe 80. So he's got another 600 verses of questions he's going to ask Lord Krishna. 
Arjun is lucky, he's got God there. You are not so lucky, you got me here. So I'm gonna give you two questions and say, move on. Just pick up the bow and arrow and shoot. Rahul, go. Got it, thank you. Didi, uh, many times uh, the result is the motivation for doing the action. Yeah, that's what Krishna is saying. Most of the time, that's right. So, what's your question? The question is, then we are thinking about the fruits of the action. No? Yeah. So, uh, basically you told, don't, uh, don't get into the fruits of the action. No, that's not but what we are I getting said. into fruits of the action. That's not what I said. That's not what Lord Krishna said. What Lord Krishna said is, you have, I'm using this word now, for right now, you have free will. You can choose your actions. You cannot, you have no say over the result of your action. Those are two different things. Am I clear? Yes? There are two different things. You have some say over what you act choose to do 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 and once you do you do not have say over the fruit that is god's will that is what we're being told and if we follow this conversation long enough maybe by the end we'll discover that in the end maybe we don't even have much say over our actions but for right now for learning purposes we have been given free will to act you can choose to sit or not, to act or not, think or not, you know, delete, drive or not. That's that much you have say over. The result, whether I make it here in time or not, is not really up to us when we were driving in that driving example. That's two different things from what you're saying, Rahul. Ponder on that a bit, yeah? Um, Sailesh. Yes, Didi. <clears throat> so, um, actually, in in this sloka, it seems that uh, um, uh, the action that you do is totally independent of, of the results that you get. I mean, you cannot uh, be attached to the fruits and also you can't think of yourself as the cause. So, that sounds like, I mean, you were talking about free will, but this, uh, the result that happens sounds like destiny. Uh, to me, like whatever is going to happen to you, irrespective of how you. Yeah, act. well, but I didn't. I'm not denying that. I think yeah. Lord Krishna is saying that he's saying Correct. you have no say no. over your results, your past yeah. karma, the people. You know, what I choose is not just my karma. Even in that car, there was Philip, myself, and Kasha. It's not just me. Correct. And all the people on the streets, it, like sometimes, you know, Gurudev's talked about a plane crashes. All those karmas had to come together to get onto that one flight for that one karma to happen, where they get on a flight, they had a choice to get on the flight or not, maybe, maybe not, we don't have to get into all those things, but there's more than one person's karma that comes into play, more than one factor just logically break it down in your life how much control do you have over the results in the things that you do we don't a simple conversation of driving from point a to point b had so many factors in it and yet we're hell bent on controlling the fruit thinking we have a way, a say over our fruits. And the truth is, if we look logically, forget karma yoga, we do not. But he also said, and so therefore don't just sit there and don't act. Remember that last piece of the sentence. Bhagwan also said that. Just because you have no say over your fruit, oh, whatever is meant to be will happen, let me see what happens, that is also not condoned. Because inaction becomes your action. There is 
karma bandhan in that. Yes. Right? Actually, uh, uh, I was uh, wanting to ask, um, how do we know, like uh, Guruji so many times says that you have come here for a bigger purpose uh, in your life rather than getting into these small, small things you should think about, you know. So, um, is there a way for us to decide our or to act in the way so that we move towards that uh, bigger purpose? Like we don't, uh, uh, I mean, I'm trying to see if uh, our action can align with where we are truly supposed to reach rather than just keep acting without... Uh, just keep acting and then you'll get to the bigger purpose actions also. Hmm. You can't, do, do you see that that's a way to control your result? Do you, it's, we are such tricky people. Human beings are so tricky. They try to grab their nose any which way they can. It sounds very altruistic, Sailesh. Oh, Gurudev says bigger purpose. So, you know, for bigger purpose, can you tell me what I can do? It's another way of wanting to control the fruits, thinking you have some say over it. If I do something that's bigger, more spiritual, more dharmic, you know, then maybe I have some say over the fruits of my action. You, all, you did the same exact thing. It just looks grandiose. And it's okay, because as I said, certain actions are better than certain other ones. Arjun saying, I want the kingdom for myself, so I'm gonna go to war versus I am a prince and I need to take care of the citizens of my kingdom and be the best king should be the should rule. That's another way, same action, but another approach. So we're moving in a higher, greater good direction. Remember, karma yoga is the means to the highest knowledge. Is that clear? Karma Yoga is the means to the highest knowledge. It purifies Chitta and it brings clarity, Sat Buddhi, as we say, clarity in intellect through action. An action that is more and more selfless, the more it purifies and the more Sat Buddhi it brings. But it's tricky selfless i gave you that silly little example of the least you could have done is say thank you when the person picked up the bag so you know we're doing seva teaching or whatever seva that we're doing we tend to think it's just teaching but it isn't i just think that it's so much bigger than that the organizer what does guruji say the person who introduces and brings someone to the path is more in seva than the teacher who teaches doesn't gurudev say that because that person is in the background they're not seeking out the accolades the same way as potentially a teacher can you know the 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 person who's overtly selfish is better than you know, the one dressed in robes, pretending to be spiritual, but really very selfish. It's a very tricky ball game. Yeah. So, but, but again, I'm not suggesting in, by any means, figure out how to be selfless. See, don't, because the moment you get into that, that is karta. Desire brings karta, doership. Doership leads us more into focusing on the results. The more we focus on the results, the more doership comes. The more doership that comes, the more desires come. It's a vicious cycle, you know? So the most we can do is just keep going forward. And for right now, what is being said is you have some freedom in action, but what you get out of your action, you have no say over. That is that much. You have no say over what will come out of your action. Somehow that could be freeing. Somehow that could create a little bit more risk after your due diligence is done to say, let me go for it. And the end game, I repeat myself, which is the more you go 100% into that action, the greater the result, which is in alignment towards something bigger comes to you. You know, I'm going to have 500 people on my course so I can show Guruji and then I can get into the room and then he's not going to give you anything. Huh, 500? Why was it not 5,000? You know, what you were doing 500? What? Eh. 
So, very tricky. Mamta and then Mary. Oh, there's two more. Okay, three more. We'll get that before we have to end. Mamta, go ahead. Uh, Jai Gurdiv. Yes, Jai Gurdiv Didi. Um, may, uh, many a times, lethargy and procrastination come in our way in giving 100%. Sometimes it also seeing that the results are coming after action and that also gets into procrastination and lethargy, like taking it for granted, sometimes taking sattva for granted and not acting. How to get over that? <laughs> I know that you think that's a unique and a different question. God bless you. But it's not. It's the same question. It, how to act? There's no answer for that. Just act. There just is no answer for that other than to do. You procrastinate, so keep procrastinating or don't. It's either do or don't. There is no other in between. I know that, there, that we think that there is. There just isn't. These are just signs of fear or, you know, wanting to control the consequences, the results, whatever you want to say. I don't want to use fancy language because we make it so esoteric. But if you just think about it, if you're sitting down and you want to stand up and you say, how do I stand up? Put your legs on the floor and use some muscle. I don't know which muscle, maybe the core, maybe the legs, maybe both and get up. If you're procrastinating and the question is, how do I stop procrastinating by not procrastinating? <laughs> I'm really have not being difficult in the answer because the answer is exactly that. There's no way out but through. The only way out is through, means act, get up, do. Yeah. Mary. Thank you so much. This brings so much clarity. And I'm seeing as you're talking, um, this seems akin unto what we talk about with um, ego and also has been called um, pain body. Um, and I'm seeing like we can we can take a form of like pride endorship, but we can also take a form of victimhood endorship. Um, and then like when we take that victimhood, then we also can villainize others as, as if they're the doers that are causing the victimhood for us. Um, and it brings so much misery to our experience. But what if we do as you're pointing us to, if we see that we have choice and we take action even though circumstances seem to point to pain, we don't have to suffer when we choose an act. <laughs> I, there's no question, just like, um, realization. Um, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, Atengi. You're not audible. Okay. Now you are. I'm okay. Are you audible? Can I? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So I've been teaching yoga to these seniors for last five years since the COVID started, and um, I find it's easy for me. So I just want to say that I feel that all of it happens through me, but not by me. So I don't stop acting on what I give my flow or what but i don't own it so is that what you're trying to say that all actions are going to happen but it's not attaching the ownership to it is that what well is, am i getting it right because gun. you might be jumping the gun we have not gone to that state yet the okay. only thing in this verse that was stated you know okay. stop being spiritual and just okay. be pragmatic. Pragmatic is the word. What is it saying? This verse is saying you have say over actions. 
and the results that come out of those actions, you have zero say over it. That's what it's saying. Though we think that what I did is why I got what I got. It's saying it's not true. You get to sit up and stand up. Okay. But what happens to you when you sit and stand is not determined by you. It just appears that way. Are we clear? That clear? No? Let me, it's 7.15. I just have one minute. Um, oh, sorry. Antonia, go ahead. With uh, this, your, your last uh, uh, saying, I made me think about how I avoid taking action so I don't deal with the consequence. But um, I don't know if I understood right, but oh, oh, now... Hold on. Let's just stop there. I don't take action because I don't want to deal with the consequences. Guess what? You're free. You don't have to deal with the consequences. They're not up to you. So why don't you just take action? Yeah. Did you, do you see what the freedom in this is? Whatever I do, I just get to do. What happens as a result of my doing, I doing meaning action, right? I have no say over. So if you walk away from anything in this session, the only thing I could suggest to you, practically speaking, forget, you know, karma, fruit, all that spiritual stuff, mumbo jumbo, just leave it all aside. And the only thing I can suggest to you is, hey, people, live a little. Take some actions. Be willing to be bold and courageous. If there's something that you're wanting to do, do it, go for it. And then whatever happens, don't judge yourself, don't beat yourself up, don't see yourself as great or not so great or whatever. Just go, keep going. If you want to do something, you want to get a job, apply. If it doesn't come, oh, I'm no good. If it comes, oh, I'm awesome. Don't worry about it, just go. Just that much takeaway, pragmatically speaking. Forget all the rest. You mute karma. Oh, I'm a doer. I'm not a doer. Come on. Eat your food. The digestion happens. God bless if it happens. If it doesn't happen, you know, you're constipated. Well, what? what to, it's how it is. Just eat the food. Pick it up from the plate. Put it in your mouth. Chew it. Swallow it. And then you don't know. You don't know. That doesn't mean you don't eat tomorrow because you're constipated today. You eat again. You cook. You go shop for your food. Are you with me? I'm breaking this down to the most pragmatic place. We become so non-human when we join the spiritual path because we want to be perfect and we conceptualize all the knowledge and we don't act. And we live smaller lives than we did before. Pathetic. No, it's you know, bigger, bolder. I'm not just talking to you. I'm saying us, we. You know, I don't need onion. I don't need garlic. And I wait for calm to override me because everything is being taken care of. I'll get your butt up and do. See? Okay. All right. Um, Florence, hold your question. It is 7.15, so let's officially close, and then I will take one question, meaning Florence's question, and then um, we can, you know, meet again next week. So let's just close our eyes. Satyam Param Dimahi Satyam Param Dimahi 
satyam param All right. For those who need to go, we meet next week again, Tuesday. Florence, let's take your question. Okay. So I don't have control over my thoughts or the ideas that come up. Yes, you hear that? I Something said, I don't have control over my thoughts or the ideas that come up because I don't even know where they come from, where the thoughts come from. Mm -hmm. And I don't have control over the result. So why do I have control over the action? What, what does that imply? Um, do I have to learn by acting? I mean... No, I, I have no idea. I mean, I'm just kind of repeating what God's Telling Arjun, you know, why did he give us control over action and not control over the fruits? I don't know. This is how the world is set up, you know. I, I, I think God sits there enjoying all this craziness. That's that's what I think. And since we don't realize that we're part of the play, we seemingly suffer, and He laughs at us, you know. And you know how it feels when people laugh at you. Be like. You don't, we don't like it, but I think that's all that's going on. We do not have control over our thoughts. This is true, very true what you say. At least that's my experience. Maybe there is some place that we have control, but that's not my experience or belief. And anyway, we have hundreds of different thoughts. And we choose to take one thought and act on one thought over another. Do we not? Earlier, somebody mentioned, I don't recall who, that action is inevitable. Just like thoughts inevitably keep arising in the space of mental field, thoughts are inherent. I use that word, inherent, deliberately. They're continuously rising and falling, hundreds and thousands of thoughts, and those thoughts are influenced by so many things, whether it's our karma, whether it's weather, whether it's the people that we're surrounded by, whether it's the day, whether whatever is happening globally in our city, in our gender, in our race, I don't know, thousands of things govern that mental space. And it's not that we have one thought, we have thousands, hundreds of thoughts. They're mostly contradicting each other. One minute we think we should do this, another minute not to do that. We give some justification for one, lesser justification or another. And eventually we do choose to act, even if it's as simple as what should I eat now? We have four different choices in our head that pop up. You know, yeah, I think I'll have pizza. No, but that's gluten. Oh, but I need protein, but cheese is not the good protein. Oh, yeah, I'll have, you know, vegan cheese pizza. Oh, but that's just cashew. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's have lasagna. Eh? And then you go and you sit in a place that serves lasagna and you order lasagna. See? It's part of it is inevitable. That's why I say to begin with right now, Lord Krishna is saying, oh, some free action. But I think at some later point we might discover, and we have heard Gurudev say, you cannot help but to act. And in the end, Krishna Bhagavan tells Arjun, do whatever you want, but you're going to do whatever I say anyway, whatever is meant to be. It's then it falls back into it's a la, you know, it's a play. I don't know. But it is like that. And we do believe that we do have some say over our thoughts. If you, I, we truly believed, not conceptually, not as an idea, but really had comprehension, experience, I have no say over my thoughts, the second part of the question would never arise. Are you with me? Did you all get that? If we really, it's right now, it's a hypothetical question. 
that begs, that question begs control. I don't like it this way. That's what that question does. We are all in a fight against what is. We don't like it and we fight it and we maneuver our system, system constantly. You know, um, as I say it, I see how big what I'm saying is. It's coming out of my mouth. I'm not like strategizing it or planning it or anything like that. But, you know, if I fully, just like, oh, anger is bad, you know, we get told as a two-year-old, I use that trite example. Then I walk around, oh, daddy, anger is bad. Oh, I got angry, I'm bad. But I do it again anyway because it's not really my experience yet. I haven't integrated that experience and that conclusion. So I keep repeating it. Oh, thoughts. We have glimpses that we are not in charge of our thoughts and we are not our thoughts, but that's a glimpse. We spend most of our time believing that our thoughts and I are one. We define who we are, how we are, what we are based on our thought. Pleasant stream of thought, how are you? I'm happy. You know, unpleasant stream of thought, how are you? I'm not happy. Thoughts all over the place, I don't feel good, I feel crazy, restless. It's not fully, totally integrated. If it were, I won't go to the next part of the question because I'm already free. Neither action, nor thought, nor emotion, nothing defines anything anymore. I see that I'm just a witness at that moment. And the action is happening through me. But remember, Arjun is not at that place. You must remember, follow the student from where the student is into the answer. Arjun is right now thinking he has some say over the fruits, killing his uncle or not, fighting this war or not you know, winning this war or not, all of it in his mind, it's there, they exist together. Do you see that? So from there, the, the verse makes complete sense. And therefore your question becomes part of that equation, you know. All right, um, shall we end here? Rahul, can you make it a quick question? I don't want to drop your question, but that is the last question. So don't raise any more hands, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, we uh, take actions and then justify the action. Okay. What was discussed earlier also. <laughs> but then it is... Okay, but you go ahead. But it is doing only, na? At least. To do it. What is wrong in that? Abhi, abhi, na kya ra, kya kya ra yu? Just do. Is vakt itna samaj le karta mein gumo. Right now you're spinning and doing and non-doing. Forget about doing and non-doing. I'm just saying do. Krishna Bhagwan is saying act, 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 act. And when the results are not what you wanted, don't worry about it because you had no say over it. That's it. You don't look very happy, Rahul. <laughs> Maybe I will have to ponder over it again. Yeah. Um, what's your point? We justify our actions. That's what you said. I say, okay, yeah, we do do that. Does that make you happier? <laughs> <laughs> It's true, we do do that. We justify our actions or non-actions. That is true. You know, it's too soon to be a non-doer. That's a state of enlightenment. You know, for right now, live your life, you know. Be happy, live for right now. Then comes another layer of doing or non-doing. Don't jump the gun. It's only chapter 2, verse 45 or 46, you know. It's a long way to go before. And remember, at the end, please listen to me. At the end of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is not enlightened. 
He has not become a non-doer. He just got an answer to the question that he put into the question basket. That's it. What dear Gurudev, in this case it was dear Krishna, I love you so much and I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I have to go to war and in front of me is my uncle and my friends and my family, um, but they did me wrong and they're really bad people. And you know, I'm also the king and I do have to be the king. So please guide, thank you, in gratitude always. It's a question in the question basket. And now he's getting an answer. And at the end of 700 verses, he will get an answer to his question. He does not become enlightened. So relax. Okay, be a doer, don't worry about it. For right now. Um, hi, I, I, could, I could be guiding you in the wrong direction. I really don't know. I just don't want you in your head. That's all I know. Don't think so much. God bless us. You know, that's all I can say. The rest I do, I like, you know, I'm walking right next to you. That's as much as I know to do. And thank God that you guys are here because then I get to hold your hand and feel like, okay, I can keep going. Otherwise I'm going, okay, I'm never going to make, I don't even get it. It was great to stay ignorant. Okay, great. It's this middle road that's killing us. Uh, Didi, really uh, quick. Um, I had actually put in the comments a question and I didn't know that you wouldn't be able to get to the comments. Um, okay. Just a very quick question. Um, based on what you're saying, uh, uh, to not be attached to the fruits of our actions, which makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that it's still good or okay for us to have goals? Or does yeah. having goals cause us to be too attached to the fruits oh, no. of life? You have to have, you have a direction, you have your goal. Now don't get focused in on the goal. Act, do what is needed. And if you just give your 100% without the fear, the worry, the feverishness, the clinginess, the resistance, right? And you just move towards it. I'm suggesting, Bhagwan is suggesting, that then you will see, you will even create the results that you want it to begin with. The nature will get behind you when you're just moving into action 100%. See? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. <laughs> Jai Gurudev. God bless you. See you next week.